I'm literally not too sure. I, I would say I don't know, but I know exactly why I don't like it. Listen, I'm a delusional girly, okay? I think I may be one of the most delusional people I've ever met in my life. He's a simp, I'm a simp. Literally, maybe you guys should break up. That's wild. Like, I feel like I'm stupid. Hello everybody, welcome to the beginning of yet another month and you guys know what that means. You guys know that this means that we are doing another monthly reading wrap up. We have survived yet another month without a book slump which is a, can't think of the word. Do your brain ever just short circuit? Cause mine does. You guys know the deal with these monthly reading wrap ups by now. Grab a drink or something. Oh, I forgot I have lipstick on. Let's just talk about these books. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my Notion on my phone. So, we're gonna pull up on my Notion what I have read this month. I think I read 18 books this month. I'm literally not too sure. So in August, I read 18 books and in those, I feel like I had a pretty good reading month. I have stopped trying to measure the month on whether or not like the amount of books that I read is good, but more of like the ratings and how I felt when reading the books and like how I felt after the books. Also, by the way, I do have my window open because it's the like breeziest day that we've had and I just kind of needed some sunlight and breeze coming through. So maybe this ambiance will sound natural and just soothing to you, but if not, I'm sorry. So I had one five star. I had quite a few fours, quite a few threes, and a few twos, and one one star. So not bad. The first book that I read this month was Bad Blood by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and technically I didn't count it as two, but technically I read Bad Blood and then I read the novella 12, but they just inserted it into the back of this book. That's why this book is so thick. I didn't know there's a novella in the back. And then once I got done reading and I realized, oh, they just inserted the 12 novella into the back of the book because I was like, wow, this is a really thick book. This was my one five-star read of the month because the Natural series, this is the last book in the Natural series and the Natural series is a five-star read for me. But I just loved the conclusion and I loved the storyline of this book and I really liked the novella mixed in with it where you see them as like a little bit older. I think they're like in their 20s when you see them again. And I just had such a good time. I felt like it wrapped up perfectly. It really expanded on the inner relationships and friendships within the group. And I I really just loved the way that everything panned out and of course the storyline was very very interesting and I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes writing again if you are ever looking for like a short fast read I would really recommend her books because all of her chapters are short all of them are very like attention grabbing there's never moments where you feel bored there's always something going on the natural series is definitely a five-star series for me if you guys take anything from this video it is to please please read the natural series because it is it is so good. Next up in the month, I actually read Mile High. I read up to like 50, 50-ish percent of this book because I think I got to like the 30 something percent mark when I was in New Jersey with Sarah and I decided to DNF this book. And then later on in the month, I decided to pick up The Right Move. And after reading The Right Move, I was like, maybe I can go back and read this book. And I just can't, I can't. I DNF this book. It was added onto my lists of DNFs for the year because wow, I just really didn't like it. Now you guys may be like, Destiny, I love this book. Why didn't you like it? I would say I don't know, but I know exactly why I don't like it. This book is the first book in the Windy City series by Liz Tom Forde. This one you follow Xanders and Stevie, and Xanders is like a professional hockey player. He has this rap of being this playboy, bad boy type, and he's all over the media for like being a player. And then you have Stevie, who is the flight attendant for the private jet that his hockey team uses. And, and this, this is, is how, how we start getting into why I don't like this book. Directly when we're introduced to Xanders, listen, I understand that especially in like sports romances, most of the time you get the whole entire trope of like the guy being a player and a bad boy or whatever, which I honestly don't really like that much. I, I, I wasn't caring about that though. I wasn't caring. It was like his attitude to Stevie as soon as he was introduced into the book. And there were a few comments that he makes that were just so wild to me. But she basically lives with her brother. She lives with her brother who's like a professional NBA player and so she lives in the apartment with him he lives in a very nice apartment that like only like really rich people can afford right and also something else about her is that she thrifts her clothes because she just enjoys buying clothes secondhand and he sees her in this apartment when he goes in and he's like 
in his inner monologue, he's like, I know that she can't live here because she doesn't look like she can afford to live here, making comments about her clothes and how she thrifts her clothes and how bad they look and how whatever it is and how she just looks so poor. All right. And then also when they're on the plane, there's just like comments that he makes to her and like insinuates things to her that just feels so like icky to me. Like it just didn't, it didn't feel like a romance where I could root for the characters literally at all. Like it did not feel like that type of romance. And also this is just personal preference with romance books. I like romances that feel more emotional. Like you have more of an emotional connection than like a very like physical connection. And this book felt more like there was a physical connection with him and not an emotional connection really at all. So that just also wasn't my cup of tea, but the guy in this book literally ruined everything for me. And after I went on to the right move, which I will talk about here in a second, I thought, you know what, maybe it can be better because I see that he essentially did like a 180 because when I read him in the next book, I was like, wow, this is like not the same guy as I was just reading. So maybe I should go back and give it another chance. Read another like 20% of it. And I just told myself like, I shouldn't have to suffer through this man's character development. I shouldn't have to do it. So I put it down. The writing wasn't bad and the book wasn't bad. It was just the main guy character I couldn't do it. And then next I read Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. This is the same author as The Bodyguard, which went viral, I feel like around this time last year, if I'm not mistaken. I was very excited for this book because I really loved The Bodyguard and I think I settled on a three stars for this book. This book is very quirky and fun. In this book, you're following Sadie and she is this artist and then she kind of, something happens to her and now she has like facial blindness. And me and Sarah, cause I was reading this when I was in Jersey and me and Sarah literally looked up on YouTube, like what people with face blindness like see. And it's kind of like some people it like, you can't, you basically can't see the face clearly. Like maybe you only see like the eyebrows. It's like, I would recommend looking it up cause I don't think that I could be able to like explain this thoroughly. I think there's like three different ways that people see faces when they have face blindness. She just got selected to enter this competition so she doesn't know now what she's going to do because she got submitted into this art show and now she cannot see faces to do her portrait. With this book, I feel like it is like said to be a romance book, but it felt very much like a literary fiction with like a romance subplot because that is way different. If you've read those, you know. I feel like it focused more on like her family trauma and the family drama that was going on and kind of a little bit of self exploration and figuring out through therapy why she is the way she is and why she responds to things the way that she does. Also, I did say this, listen, I'm a delusional girly, okay? I think I may be one of the most delusional people I've ever met in my life, actually. Like I will create something from nothing all of the time. This girl is like new, new level, level delusional. Out of context, there's a point where like she meets somebody and she's like, oh yeah, that's my husband. Like we're gonna get married, like blah, 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 blah. But like to the tens, like to the extreme. But, like she runs at him a few times and she's always like, oh, my husband. Like calls him her husband. And I was just like, all right. Like I said, it was a very easy read. I literally sat down and started this inside of the Starbucks and finished it in one sitting. Like it is a very simple and easy read. It's very entertaining. It's fun. It's quirky. And I did enjoy the connections that she had with the guys in this book, like because it is a love triangle, which once it's just, just give it a chance. Even if you don't love love triangles, that's coming from the queen of hating love triangles. There are just endearing moments. She has a dog and I can really, really relate to her caring so deeply about her dog. Cause there are also points in the book where like stuff happens with her dog and she's like throwing everything out the window. And that's literally me. It takes place in New York. I'm pretty sure I might've made that up, but it takes place in a city of some sort. Or is it Texas? Oh my God. Is it Texas? And I just acted like it was New York. It's in a city of some sort. Next up we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Now this, I bought this in my last like book buying video that I did because it was just when it started blowing up and then Bestie Sarah literally started raving about this book. So I thought the appropriate time to read it would be when I was in Jersey with her. I ended up giving it a four stars. I really enjoyed it. I would recommend this book to you guys if you're wanting to get into fantasy, but you haven't gotten into fantasy yet and you want something a little bit more simple. I would 100% recommend this one because it is fantasy, but it focuses more on the characters and the world they're in. And the world they're in is kind of it's giving like decades back, I am pretty sure. Like that's the time period that they're in. But it's like the same human world. It's just that they kind of talk about these like gods that are at war. You're following Roman, Roman? 
Yeah, that's right. Why do I think that's wrong? You're following Roman and Iris, and they both work at this newspaper column, and they're like very much rivals. That's why it's called divine rivals who would have thought and they both are writers they have these typewriters i mean it's so magical and the reason that i really like this book is because it is a fantasy so it does focus on the fantasy element sometimes but i feel like it really focuses in on the inner connection of Rowan and Iris which again I said earlier that I really love an emotional connection in the story and that's exactly what this book was. I feel like the romance is so endearing and it's so sweet and I feel like if you're wanting a fantasy and you're mixed with that then this is 100% what you should read. I like this because I can recommend this to people who maybe don't read fantasy a lot and want a more like dip the toe in the water to a fantasy. This is definitely that for you. It's not a high fantasy by any means. The reason it wasn't a five is because there are parts in the middle that I felt like did kind of get a little like boring ish in the middle like not that I was like so bored but I was like oh okay like is anything going to happen and that was the parts where we were getting maybe like a little bit more of just like lore of the gods and them trying to figure out stuff to do with like the gods that were at war and I just wasn't like very interested in that because the romance really had me like really in it so I was like I want to go back to the romance like I don't even want to care about these gods anymore I just want to like talk about you guys can we talk about you guys can we sit down and like talk through our stuff on a little typewriter so cute next up we have the seven year slip which i actually ended up giving a four and a half stars this was very close to a five stars i had such a good time reading this if you guys watched my like how many pages can i read in a week video i've read oh, oh all of these all books of i think this is where it ends though i read all of these books in that video this one i was just having the best time reading i literally started it on the airplane and the plane ride was probably like not even two hours long and i almost had it finished by the time that I got off the plane like I was so in it the seven year slip takes place in New York City and it basically has this backdrop of New York City which is a big part of it and also this very magical apartment where you meet our main character Clementine and she has this aunt who had this apartment in the city and she all her aunt always had these like tales of how the apartment was magical and she just thinks that it was like mad like you know you're, when you're a kid and people tell you things are magical and you just kind of believe them so she's kind of stopped believing in that and so now she's living in this apartment and it's left to her and then one day she she's at this job and she's kind of just at a standstill in her life and at a crossroads emotionally and one day she walks into her apartment and there is this guy in her apartment but the thing is is that the apartment is seven years in the past she's not living seven years in the past so only when she's in the apartment is it seven years in the past but as soon as she walks out of the apartment it's the present time but she is basically communicating with this man who is in the apartment and getting to know him it is so good i don't want to give too much away but i loved the new york city like lance i loved the new york city backdrop of this book that's a given i literally love books with new york city and them it's just such a magical setting to me but also the connection that the two characters make and then there's another whole entire plot that's going on in this book that i don't want to give away that it's just so like swoon worthy in their connection and it was just pulling on my heartstrings like everything about it i love with this being september and you maybe like i understand listen not everyone thinks it's fall in september i get it but if you're kind of wanting reads that are transitioning into that fallish feeling i would 100 percent recommend the seven year slip also this is the same author as the dead romantics which i read last year which is a hundred percent a fall read because that book is so good as well i just think that this author is going to be an auto buy author for me because for the two books that i read from her she has made some incredible books that i really really loved and like felt emotional connected to you because I remember with the dead romantics I literally cried and I don't cry a lot with books so I just this book was just so good I've seen some of you guys go and pick this up and tag me in your stories that you got it and I hope you all love it because I literally love this book then I read a few books on my kindle this month so the first book of that was out on a limb now I had seen this book circulating around first of all from heather i saw her basically rave about this book so i was like you know what i want to give it a shot so then i was looking for a kindle unlimited book i picked up out on a limb and this book was so good it was so good that i went and wrote a goodreads review which also august was the month that i hopped back on to goodreads because of bestie sarah so everyone say thank you sarah moral of the story i'm back on goodreads if you guys want to follow my goodreads it's always down below also i can't like friend anybody back so i think you just like follow instead of friend i don't know anyway moral of the story it was so good that i wrote a goodreads review and i ended up giving this book a four stars i will tell you guys this though 
If you guys don't like the pregnancy trope, then I would skip this book, even though I don't want you to skip it. But if you really despise the pregnancy trope, you won't like this book. So just like don't read it because it is a whole entire pregnancy trope. It is about a one night stand that turned into her with child. But the thing that I really liked about this book is that there's so many funny moments. The main woman character is just so witty and funny in her dry humor that I really relate with. And the guy is giving sweet nerdy type and I just absolutely loved it. What I loved about this book was absolutely it showcased I feel like healthy friendships and relationships to the point where it really focused on communication. You guys know miscommunication is, I hate that trope. It's my least favorite trope of all time. So when a book really focuses on and brings attention to how important communication and boundaries are within both friendships and relationships, I loved that. I loved how they really focused on both bound. What I was saying was I really love how it really just very much so forced the boundaries and communications and how important it is because I feel like a lot of romances don't do that. Like they don't really showcase how important communication and both boundaries are because I know like no romances are 100% realistic and I even said this in a review that's not what I'm reading them for. I'm reading them for escapism so of course I don't want them to feel just exactly like reality. I really enjoyed how this still felt like escapism but how relationships should be and like what a healthy relationship I feel is. Especially in sticky situations because this book is very much like a sticky situation. So I really really liked that. Also something that I really liked that this book does at points is tackle the topic of postpartum depression because I still I also feel like this happens in a book when there is a pregnancy trope or like an epilogue or just pregnancy is in a romance book. I feel like postpartum depression isn't talked about a lot or even like acknowledged and so I really liked how they also did talk about that in this book. It was just it was so good. Then after that I finally read The Right Move. I say finally like were we all like waiting for me to read The Right Move? I read The Right Move for very many reasons. Last month when I said that Mile High was on my TBR for the month, I got a lot of comments that were saying that they didn't really like Mile High, but they really liked The Right Move. So after DNFing Mile High, like I said, the writing wasn't bad. I didn't dislike the female character. It was really just the guy. So I really wanted to give The Right Move a chance. And I'm so glad that I did. I ended up settling on a four stars for this one. I initially rated it a three. And that got me into a little bit of hot water on Goodreads. Can I just say this in this video? When I rate a book a three and a half, a three stars, I don't know when this got turned into a bad rating. I literally made a TikTok about this. So if you've already seen that TikTok, I'm sorry. But it just reminded me of this because I initially had it as a three stars. But like on Goodreads, you can't put half ratings. It was originally three and a half stars. But then sometimes I move down or up in ratings after I sit with them. So now I've decided that it's a four. And I got so many comments of people being like, oh my gosh, like side eye, like I can't believe you didn't like this book, like what's wrong with this book, blah, 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 like a bunch of just kind of like negative comments about how I rated it low. And for me, a three stars is like a book that I think is good and I had a really good time reading and I would 100% recommend. It just wasn't like a, oh my gosh, I'm so in love with these characters type of thing. And I can see that the writing is good and that somebody else would enjoy it. But I got like so like, People were mad. People were mad on good reason. But it's actually four. So this is The Right Move is the second book in the Windy City series, Mile High, then The Right Move. Gave this one a four stars. This one is about the girl in the first book, Stevie. It's about her brother, Ryan, and also her best friend, Indy. The reason that I remembered her name was because at the very beginning, he calls her Indiana a few times and she's like, that's not what my name is short for. What's her name? What's her name? I don't know, but her name is Indy. That like really just stuck in my brain. Well, it didn't stick stick in my brain because I had to think about it, but then I remembered it. So it kind of did stick in my brain. I don't know why I'm arguing with myself over the logics of what I'm saying. I, oh my gosh, Ryan, he's everything. And he's very closed off at the beginning of the book. Very much doesn't want Indy there, but is doing it for his sister. And he very much doesn't want her there. But like from the beginning, Indy just snuggles her way into his heart and he kind of has a soft spot for her which it's also like that guy that's very closed off that has a soft spot for like the one person type of thing and they end up having to fake date for something so the whole entire book they're fake dating and they're putting these rules on like how to help each other so she's helping him kind of know how it is to be in a relationship and he's helping her with like her own issues that she was going on within the book they are healing each other the things that this man does for her My standards are through the roof. It's so sweet and 
one of my favorite like love languages just in life especially like when people remember little things about you or just show how deeply they care about you through action is my favorite thing in real life but it's also my favorite thing to see in romance books where it's like you can remember that they said something or they mentioned something the stuff guys the stuff that this man does is unreal he's a simp i'm a simp literally I think it was a hundred times better than Mile High. I loved the couple so much better. I loved both Indy and Ryan because they were both so amazing in their own ways that I would 100% recommend that it, you guys read The Right Move. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time. This is actually a book that I started back in June and then I didn't finish it until this month. But I wasn't like not reading it. It was just that I put it down. Anyway, this is for my thriller video that's up. If you guys haven't watched that, go watch it. This is the first book that I read in this and I ended up giving this a four stars, which was very surprising for me because I wouldn't say that this book feels like a thriller. It's very much like a mystery, but I, mystery and thrillers are literally the same. I get it. I understand. Like there was no like thrilling aspect to it for me. It was more of a like, let's put the pieces of this puzzle together. And what this book is about is there is a mom and on Halloween or the day before Halloween around that time, she's waiting for her son to get home and she looks out the window and watches as her son stabs a man and kills him on the street. She goes to bed and she wakes up like the day before and as the book goes on she keeps going further and further into the past to try to unravel why her son murdered this guy and if she can stop the time loop it was so good because i listen when i read a thriller i i heavily overthink it because i really want to like best the book like i want to figure out the plot twist and be like yeah i figured it out like it was it was pretty much there i thought i had it and then I did it and i was so like i said this in the video but when i was reading this book i had to go drop my dad off at work and as I was driving in the car, like not be, like having to take a break from this book, I was literally like, oh my God, I wonder what the plot twist is. Like, I wonder what's going to happen with the book. And I immediately went home and continued reading it. Like when a book does that, are you joking? Like I said, it wasn't thrilling, but I found the mystery of it to be so intriguing. And like, I really wanted to know what happened. The reason it's not a five is because there were parts of the story that just felt dragged out and very repetitive and kind of got boring at times. This has like messages i feel like on motherhood and it just like was so interesting to read about and then i read the inmate by frida mcfadden and i ended up giving this a two stars i just did not enjoy this book at all this book is about brooke and she has to take this job being like a nurse practitioner at this jail but she realizes that this jail is the same jail that she sent her high school boyfriend to for like a crime that he committed when they were in high school and she was the one to put him there the reason that i gave this to two stars was strictly just because i couldn't guess the plot twist but it Upon further thinking of this, I don't feel like it's because like, oh, the plot twists were there the whole entire time. I just missed it type of thing. I feel like it was just one of these like the plot twist just kind of came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like came out of nowhere and we're going to act like it was always there, but it's very outlandish and kind of came out of nowhere. This book was just very repetitive and they literally start explaining this event via multiple chapters of what happened to her in high school and literally you can get it like from the jump you get it from the jump what happened to her it's just that they just drag it out and i was so so bored like i just wanted this book to end and then i read the turn of the key by ruth ware which i ended up giving this one a two and a half because i said this like i feel like ruth ware has great writing but i just did not like the book and this book didn't even really have a plot twist so let me explain. This is about a woman who takes a nannying job to be a live-in nanny at this like old Victorian style house, but it's like a smart house. It's like this Victorian style house. Don't know why I'm like really building upon that. I feel like that was very like straightforward for you guys. In case it's not, it's an old Victorian style home that they've renovated to have smart house features. I'm like a lot of land, very rich people that live here. She gets this nannying job and weird stuff starts to happen in the house. Okay, my issue with the book is, is that this book takes place, I don't even think, I don't even think it's a full week. Maybe it's a full week, maybe. And literally, I feel like day one on her job lasted like 40 pages. And it's not like a lot was happening. It's like the most mundane details that you were learning. So anyway, you learn at the beginning of the book that this event happened. You learn that at the very beginning. So then you go through the whole entire book of being recounted every single day to get to the end to figure out like what happened. You get to the end and it's just telling you the events that you already know that happened like you get to the end and it's just like yeah this is what happened and like you could definitely like put just two and two together and then like the last two pages of the book there's a plot twist 
that just felt like almost an afterthought. Like it felt like, oh wait, the whole entire question, like the one question you have throughout the whole entire book, I just realized that I finished the book and didn't answer it. So now let me write like a little letter, like explaining it for you. I was actually mad when I finished this book because I felt like I wasted so much of my time. And then I read A Flicker in the Dark. Now this one I actually ended up reading a four stars because this one really reminds me of The Lovely Bones, whether you guys have read that book or watched the movie. The Lovely Bones is a movie that I watched literally so many times as a kid. Like it was one of my favorite movies in a weird way. This is about Chloe and she is a psychologist, but when she was 12, she actually figured out that her dad was behind these serial murders that were happening in her small town. And she is the one that basically convicted him of this crime and put him behind bars. And now it's present day, she's a psychologist. She's trying to help people. And then these girls around town start going missing and murdered in the same exact way that they did when her dad was the one killing them. So she's got to figure out what's going on because she thinks it has something to do with her. So I really like this book because I did guess that, like, okay, the plot twist with this one, it crossed my mind at one point and I was like, no, no, that can't be it. And then at one point I felt like I had the plot twist and then it wasn't because I was like, wait, that may be too in your face. Like that may be too obvious. And I don't make, I'm not making any sense. But the point is, is that I just had a, I liked the topic of this book and I liked the plot of this book. It wasn't super thrilling, but I feel like there were like twists and turns that I really, really enjoyed and had a really good time reading it. And then I read The Only One Left by Riley Sager and I ended up giving this book a three and a half stars. With this book, I had very, very high expectations because like I said earlier, me and Riley Sager, we kind of have, like, we're like this. We're like this, okay? It's like love-hate relationship, not personally, Nothing against the man, but his books sometimes, it's just kind of like, you know, up, up for grabs if I like them or not. This one I was very interested in because it was like a gothic thriller and it takes place in this house on this hill and it's like about a, the main character has to take care of this woman who committed like Lizzie Borden style murders on her family. And that sounded super interesting to me. But the thing is, is that I feel like it's the same thing with this book where it was like very slow and a lot of things were drawn out and I feel like the plot twist of the book was good. Like I feel like the plot twist of the book was good. I really didn't expect it. I kind of expected it to pan out another way with that character and then it went the whole entire other way. I just thought that it was very entertaining and that's about it. There wasn't much more else that I felt with it. The plot twist caught me off guard. I did like the backdrop and I did like the characters and the way that there were multiple things unraveling throughout the book. And I would recommend you guys read it. I've read a lot of other, not a lot, that's like, no, like I'm like three, three books of his that are better than this one. I really want to read, uh, is it The Last Time I Lied? So I think that takes place at like a summer camp. I really want to read that one. I may read that in September. I don't know, but this one was fine. We have The Blonde Identity. This book is, if you were wanting a short, easy, and fun read, like you're not gonna get attached to the characters, you're not gonna be head over heels in love with a couple, but you're gonna be entertained. I'm not I'm not promising you that you're gonna find your new favorite book boyfriend. I'm not promising you that you're gonna fall in love with this book and it's gonna be five stars, but if you want a short palate cleanser that you're gonna have a fun time with, then I would recommend this book. <sighs> This is my one, one star of the month, and that was The Seller. So this author used to be a Wattpad sensation. As soon as I read the first page, I was like, I'm not gonna like this book. Because I wanted to see it through. One, this page, one, this book is 100 pages too long. Like, they, it just repeated the same chapters over and over and over and over again. I kid you not. There were like, probably 12, 20, 20? chapters that were literally just the same material inside of it over and over and over again like we didn't really progress through anything you learn pretty much everything at the very beginning of the book within the first 30 pages and nothing happens for the rest of them until the very end of the book so i think this is like kind of what like a thriller horror for like very young girls this circumstance it's about this girl summer and she gets kidnapped by this man who kidnaps girls puts them in his basement and calls them all like types of different flowers and he basically like dresses them up and makes them like i don't know behave certain ways for him and it's a very horrifying thing to like actually experience and i just wish that when i read it i didn't feel horrified you know what i mean like when i'm reading a book and it's like this is a horrifying experience it's just because i have the knowledge that that would be horrifying i didn't feel horrified and I understand that this is a YA book but like there wasn't any ounce of like thrill chill nothing also there like so you get her boyfriend's point of view she's a boyfriend and 
like when they're talking about each other they kind of sound like they hate each other by the way she's like yeah like he could be really annoying and like super like uh, like super lazy and all of this stuff but, like I love him and I was like do you though like it doesn't feel like it like this is a, like between me and you girl this doesn't feel like it and even in his point of view he's like could she be annoying and like stubborn and all this stuff Maybe you guys should break up. Next up, I read Forget Me Not. This book was at three and a half stars, but it's so peculiar for me because I was like swooning, I was giggling, I was having a great grand old time reading this book, but I wasn't emotionally connected to the couple at all. Like makes honestly zero sense to me, but I just had a very good time reading this book. Our main character, Ama, I think, Ama, 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 give me a second, Elliot. Ama is a wedding planner. She's very good at her job and Elliot is a florist and he's very good at his job. And they share a history together. Both of them get hired for this very like big influencers wedding that they have to work on together and they haven't talked to each other in a few years. In Elliot's point of view, the only time you get Elliot's point of view is when it's the past. So when you're reading about the past, it's from his point of view. And when you're reading about the present, it's from Ama's point of view. And the thing is, is like even in the past, they weren't really like in a relationship, if that makes any sense. Like they've shared a few moments together they weren't in a relationship so I didn't feel that like connection like oh my gosh like I really want them to get back together like they were amazing together I just kind of was rooting for them because I knew I was supposed to be rooting for them and then in the present time they literally like the only interactions that they have in this book that mean something is in the past like in the present they spend the whole entire book not talking to each other saying very little amounts of words to each other but you can tell like within their interactions that they still care for each other but they barely even speak to each other okay they don't even really communicate and so then when the end of the book comes and they still didn't really communicate and I didn't see them a modern day as a couple I was like oh I'm just supposed to believe this but I had a really good time reading it and there were very sweet moments and moments where I was like oh my god like that but it was in the past there was like one in the present time but all of them were in the past so I was like can I get some of these moments now okay maybe there were like one or two in the present but still but I had a great time reading this book and I would recommend you guys reading this book because I had a great time reading it we're almost done guys literally to the home stretch next up we have the grace here but I know both Rachel and Haley read this book and they described it as like disturbing and as soon as they said that my name was all over it i just love there's something so crazy about my mind that when somebody's like this was very disturbing i'm like now i have to know i have to read it because i want to see if i'm going to be disturbed because i feel like i'm not disturbed very easily when reading this book i wasn't disturbed by the way i was never disturbed by it but I, I rated this a four stars because I loved the messaging of this book. I just loved this book so much. This book is described as The Handmaid's Tale meets The Lord of the Flies. Haven't read either of those books, by the way. Can't tell you if that's accurate. That's just what everyone says about this. Literally on the front of the book, I'm pretty sure she notes. Like the inside, she uses like two quotes from those. Yeah. A rat in a maze is free to go anywhere as long as it stays inside the maze. Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale. And then maybe there is a beast. Maybe it's only us from The Lord of the Flies. You're following Tyranny, 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 Tyranny. I don't know. Complicated names and me don't mix. She is about to go to the Grace here, which is basically on the girl's 16th year. They go live in the captivity of the woods to get rid of their magic that the men in their society feel that they have. That way they can come back and they can be great little wives for their husbands who stake claim on them. It's very much dystopian. But no one ever speaks about what happens though inside of the grace here. So you are following Tyranny as she is going through the grace here and it's like very almost like reminds you of like not the Salem Witch Trials even though that's always what comes to my mind when I think about it but it's just very much like that like the very like is this real? Is it not real? Is there really magic? Is there not magic? Like what's going on? There's also these things called poachers in the woods that essentially try to kill these young girls and skin them because of the magic that's within them. That part is, that part's rough. That's wild. This book made me emotional. Didn't know I would be emotional. The way this book ended, it's one of those endings where like people are split on it, on what it means, on what happened. There's just so much that unravels in this book that grabs your heart. The friendships, the relationships, the messaging of the book, like it is so so good i would recommend everybody to read this book it is a four stars but it's one of those books that i'm going to be thinking about literally forever the last book that i read this month we're ending on listen we're ending on kind of crazy now because the last book that i read this month was red rising i all of you guys should stand up and give me a round of applause for this i'm gonna be honest i'm never somebody to like pat myself on the back but i'm gonna pat myself on the back for this and you guys may be like destiny what you're reading we're all on the edge of our seats we're all like Ugh, biting our nails like that's what we sat through this whole entire like 40 minute long video for i don't have a rating <laughs> 
I don't have a rating. I literally, it's not bad where I'm like, oh, I want to rate it a one star or a two star. Like, I feel like the writing is good. I feel like the storyline is good. I feel like I'm the problem. Like, I feel like I'm stupid. And I feel like that's the problem with it. Like, I don't feel like it's the book's problem. I feel like it's a me problem. So I've had a hard time landing on a rating for it. But as of right now, I literally have no rating for this book. I started off this book reading it physically. And honestly, for the first 30% through, like, we were fine. We were chilling. I understood that they were on Mars. I understood that he had this job. I understood that this happened. I understood that now this is going to happen for him to infiltrate this and blah, 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 blah. Then there's this part where he gets to this school. After that, I lost all recollection of what was happening. So then I picked up this book yesterday and I was like, I want to finish this before the month is over. Like, I really want to finish this book. I started listening to the audiobook, which really did help me, but I feel like after that, I was just a lost cause. Like, I could understand what was happening in the moment, but I didn't understand why it was important or like what this was going to go to, poli like politics wise. So, like, obviously, all of this is leading up to something. I am definitely going to have to watch somebody talk about this book for me to help me land on a rating because I feel like it's the same thing. Like, so when I read Crescent City, like I love Crescent City, but I kind of felt the same way where I was like, I don't know what my rating is, but then I sat down and watched Carrie can read, talk about it and explain it to me for three hours. And then after I understood what was happening, I was like, wow, wait, I really love that. Like, no, I actually five star. And so I feel like that's, I'm going to have to watch somebody talk about and break down for a dummy. You're looking at her, a dummy. You're gonna have to break down what this book was about. I, I think I will listen to the rest of the book. I think I genuinely, this is gonna have to be like me reading audiobooks. I think that's what's gonna have to be. I'm gonna have to listen to audiobooks with this series for majority of them. Those are all literally just like look at the stack. Don't look at the mess, but just look at the stack. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I read that many books this month. All in all, I feel like it was a pretty positive reading month. And that's all you can really ask for. So if you guys enjoyed, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that you guys know how to do. And it's another month. We're starting a month anew. The TBR video is going to be out that I'm very excited for. Like, I've never been excited for a TBR video before, but it came up with this concept. And I'm very excited for you guys to see it. So hopefully you guys will watch the TBR video. And I'm very excited because now we're in the fall months. And the fall is like my favorite time to read. Because I love the ambiance. I love like the material that I feel like you want to read in the fall time. So I'm very excited for like the next few months of reads. And I want to read as many as I can because I'm like 20 plus books behind on my reading goal. And even though the number of books that you read don't matter. But like in my brain I'm like I hate that I'm behind. I hate that I really put it out there. Like, you know, they tell you, like, shoot for the stars, but they don't tell you what happens when you fall just short of them. Guess I'll find out. <laughs> okay. I'll see you guys when I see ya. Peace.